Moving question number two and question number eight in this session. In the previous session, we have solved question number one to nine, except question two and except question eight, which will be solved in this session. So please note these two questions are of extreme importance because these are a little different than the usual questions that the ICI generally asks from this chapter. So question number two is based on uh, the chapter of employee cost. Uh, and question number eight, I think, is based on a stock valuation. So that will be discussed later. As of now, we'll be doing question number two. So uh, let us start. Employee cost chapter uh, question number two. We are discussing November 20 RTP for costing. All right, let us start, please. Uh, some company pays the following to a skilled worker, TK, engaged in the production work. The following are the employee benefits which are paid to the employee. Employee benefits is as good as saying your salary, your DA, your HRA, your uh, provident fund, pensions, etc. etc. So, basic salary per day is given. Your uh, dearness allowance is given, house rent allowance is given, transport allowance is given, that is 50 per day of actual work. Over time, that is twice the hourly rate, considers the basic and DA, only if works for more than 9 hours a day, otherwise no overtime allowance. So the criteria that the company will pay overtime is 9 hours a day, okay, more than 9 hours in a day. If works for more than 9 hours in a day, then the overtime is considered after the 8th hour. So for example, if he has worked for 9.5 hours, first of all, he will qualify for overtime because he has worked for more than 9 hours. And the overtime is not just half an hour. The overtime will be considered after the 8th hour, that is 1.5 hours overtime. Then work of holiday and Sunday, double double the rate per day of basic provided he works for at least four hours at least four hours the holiday and sunday basic is eligible for all allowances and stat deduction so it's a data given to us that we are going to pay the basic and uh, that is eligible for allowances and deductions for the costing purpose not for us earned leave and casual leave these are paid leaves okay so if uh, there is a casual leave then in that case he will not come to the office to work or to the factory to work but he will be paid for those number of hours because that is casual leave it's a privilege given to the uh, laborer by the company employers contribution to provident fund is 12 percent of basic and da employers contribution to pension fund is seven percent of basic and da so whatever is the basic and da component out of that component or on that component we are paying 12 percent uh, pf and seven percent pension fund okay the company normally works 8 hours a day and 26 days in a work. This is the normal working culture of the company, 26 days a month. The company provides 30 minutes, the company provides 30 minutes lunch break in between. So in a day of 8 hours, the productive hours are 7.5 because 30 minutes is lunch break. Okay. In the month of August, so we are given the details for one month, Mr. Z works for 23 days including 15th august and sunday so the data has given or data has been given that he is working for 23 days and he has and this 23 days includes the 15th august which is normally a holiday and sunday obviously which is a holiday he has applied for three days of casual leave now the data which we had read while reading the question that the casual leaves are paid leaves so in so for these three days he will not uh, come to the factory to work but he is going to be paid money because this is a casual leave and casual leaves are paid leaves as per the questions data on 15th august and sunday he has worked for five and six hours he has worked for he has worked for five and six hours so sunday and 15th august are uh, holidays right this so it is covered in this data and uh, he will get overtime provided he is working for at least four hours and he has worked for five and six hours which means he is eligible to get overtime content on sunday and 15th august ka two days then on 5th and 13th august on 5th and 13th august he has worked for 10 hours and nine hours respectively now 5th august he has worked for 10 days this is going to qualify for overtime because it is more than nine hours 
13th August he has worked for 9 hours but this will not be qualified for overtime because the question clearly mentioned that overtime will be paid only if he has worked for more more than 9 hours all right okay so 5th August he qualifies for overtime 13th August he does not qualify for overtime in the month uh, that Mr. Z has worked he has worked for 100 hours on a job which is job number whatever you are required to compute three things one is the earnings per day effective wage rate for Mr. Z and wages to be charged to job number HT 200 interesting question first part now the first part is saying earnings per day has the question mentioned that we have to find the earnings per day of Mr. Z? No. That Mr. Z's earning has been asked in part 2. So whatever data pertains in this question to Mr. Z, that is 3 days of casual leave, overtime, 15th August, Sunday, all this data will be used only for part 2. This earnings per day is a normal earnings per day so i will take all normal data here to compute the earnings per day which means i will take uh, 26 days in a month i will take uh, 8 hours in a day minus 30 minutes of lunch break i will use all this basic normal information to get my earnings per day computation in the entire month what is the uh, labor uh, cost that the company has incurred and whatever is the cost of normal situations that i will divide by 26 number of normal working days and i will get the earnings per day whatever data is pertaining to z that will be used only in part number two so that we'll discuss later when the time comes as of now as of now we will restrict ourselves to normal usual data so let us start so uh, uh, let us first find all the costs so let us start from the basic salary basic salary is 100 a thousand per day and in normal situations we have a working month of 26 days so that is going to be that is going to be thousand into 26 days note that year casual leaves or 15th august or sunday will not be considered because we are finding normal earnings per day we are now not finding in this part the earnings of Mr. Z. So we will not use Z's data whatsoever. DA is 20% of basic. So 1000 into 26, whatever basic we must have got here, that into 20%, we will get the uh, DA as well. And when I add basic plus DA, I will get the salary of 31,200. Then HRA is 16% of basic. That is 26,000 into 16%. I will get 4160. That is 26,000 into 16%. Let's tie it up 26,000 into 0 0.16 4160 fine then we have a transport allowance okay what the ICI has done rather than now doing 26 into 50 and then dividing ultimately by 26 ICI has taken 50 as per the uh, uh, earnings per day at the end of the solution what you could have done is we could have taken 26 into 50 here and then that entire amount can be again divided by 26 rather than that what the ic has done once we get the earnings per day we will add 50 flat after we get the earnings per day you can do this format or you can add 26 into 50 and again divide by 26 in the end the final answer will not change okay then we have overtime as i said overtime holiday casual leave all these things are only pertaining to mr z will not come in normal earnings per day then we have employers contribution 12% of basic plus DA. Now the basic plus DA content is 31,200. That 31,200 into 12% and into 7% will give me will give me the uh, PF content and will give me the pension content. After I add, okay, and uske, I don't see any other costs. Fine. So when I add up all these things, I will get total cost of 41,288. As of now, this is excluding the transport allowance. Once I get uh, uh, the total cost I will divide by normal working days that is 26 and I will get the uh, rate per day again this is excluding the transport allowance if this amount is excluding transport allowance I will add 50 separately and after adding 50 I will get the normal earnings per day so if things happen normally that is nobody takes a leave or there is no casual leave or there is no overtime if things happen normally then this is what an employee will earn who has the following a wage structure 
so first part is done as computation of earnings per day now if the question had asked the earnings per hour then in that case the first working note would have been useful where the ICI has computed the normal working hours less lunch break into number of days and this will give me the normal working hours in a month but this is now not useful because the question has not asked us to find the rate per hour but the question has asked to find the rate per day all right so we have done the first part moving on effective wage rate per hour of mr z now that mr z is in the picture now we will use all that data which pertains to mr z that he has taken three casual leaves that he has worked overtime on two days that he has worked on a sunday and 15th august all this data which is strictly pertaining to z now will be considered all right so let's go step by step now we are doing only Z's earning. Now tell me how many actual days Mr. Z has worked? 23 days. So 23 days Z has physically come and worked in the office or the factory, whatever the case is. Now this guy has also applied for some casual leaves. Where is that data? Here. Three days casual leave. Now three days casual, he has not worked, but he is ultimately going to get the salary for these days also because the data mentioned that three days are casual leave and casual leaves are paid leaves. So 23 days of actual work and three days of casual leave appears to be 26 days on which he is going to get the salary on. So this 26 days is what we start from. Basic salary will be 1000 into 26 days and this 26 days obviously includes includes 15th august and sunday so on this 15th august he is qualifying for basic pay because the question had mentioned that a basic pay is provided is eligible is eligible for allowances and stat deduction so he is going to be eligible for the uh, uh, extra days worked for basic pay content as well that is 1000 per day basic salary into 26 days on which he will get salary for note that he has worked for 23 days but he is going to get salary for 26 days because three days is paid casual leave moving on now note that the question had mentioned very important that for holiday and sunday he is going to get double of the per day basic now this holiday and uh, sunday is already included in our basic pay of this calculation which means thousand content is already a part of the above statement he is paid double that means thousand into two that is two thousand out of two thousand thousand content is already captured here it is only the additional thousand which is still not captured so that thousand oh where is that oh sorry here so that thousand into two days has still not been captured because the original thousand of basic content has been paid in the row above the additional that is basic salary and then he will be paid the overtime content because of him working on 15th august and sunday that extra thousand is captured in this data that makes it 2000 additional basic pay on the 15th august and uh, sunday ka additional content all right don't do into 2000 because out of 2000 1000 is already captured in the basic salary because 26 includes those two days of extra work so basic salary is sorted then 20 percent of uh, basic salary is the da so uh, 26000 plus 2000 appears to be 28000 this 28,000 into 20% 20 is the dearness allowance and this amount is basic plus DA. Then, then we have house rent allowance of 16% of basic salary. Basic salary appears to be 28,000. So 28,000. So 16% into 28K. Let's check 28,000 into 0.164480 is your HRA. Then you have overtime allowance. Now, you will question why is the overtime not coming in the previous statement that is because as i mentioned the previous statement was for generic data now we are doing for z so overtime will come then you will ask we have already captured the overtime no we have done the computation for the work for holiday and sunday overtime content is different now he has worked overtime on uh, that 5th august and 13th august but as i said nine hours will not qualify for overtime because he uh, will get overtime only if he works for more than nine hours 
this 10 hours is going to qualify for overtime all right so so 10 minus 8 working hours is 2 hours is the number of hours that is going to qualify for overtime so this will be multiplied by the rate per hour of basic and i think basic plus da is what was mentioned yes basic and da whatever is the rate per hour of basic plus da into 2 will be done because it's the overtime content which means we have to figure out the rate per hour which means what is and uh, this rate per hour is basic plus da tell me what is the basic per day can i say basic per day is 1000 given to us directly in the question da is 20 percent appears to be 200 can i say this is per day or per hour this is per day in a day he is actually working for eight hours but out of eight hours half an hour is lunch break so effectively is working for 7.5 hours so if i divide 1200 by 7.5 the rate per hour is going to be 160 this 160 will be used on two hours and this will be doubled because of overtime so 160 into two hours into two because it is paid at twice the or double double the basic rate all right so 160 into 2 into 2 appears to be the overtime content which is captured here 160 into 2 into 2 and the match done is what we have done uh, basic plus da divided by 7.5 hours that is 1200 divided by 7.5 hours that is 160 per hour which we have also done clear so one one uh, section is paid for 15th august and sunday the other overtime section is paid for the overtime hours he has worked on uh, on 5th august and 13th august okay so that is also sorted so that is also gone and then comes uh, pf and uh, pension that is 12 percent of basic plus da that is 33600 into 12 percent and 7 percent and this is also our uh, salary and okay transfer allowance is left now transfer allowance is important what they have said transport allowance is paid 50 per actual day of work tell me how many days he has paid salary for 26 days coming from your this 26 days but the question has mentioned transport allowance is paid for days of actual work so out of 26 days three days being casual leave those three days he has been paid for but that is not actual work so he will be paid allowance only on 23 days of actual work and that is my transport allowance all right so these are the minute things that you need to read carefully and then apply on the solution so once i have my basic once i have my da once i have my hra allowance allowance overtime everything employers contribution i will totally get the i will totally get the wage content that mr z has earned in the month of august now question has not just asked us find out the salary that z has received if the question had asked us the salary content then this is the final answer but the question has asked the effective wage rate per hour wage rate per hour now if we are doing everything for z then obviously we are going to divide the total monthly wages by the number of hours that z has put in now here the ici has given the solution in a different way frankly what we think the cons uh, uh, the solution is wrong because uh, i'll tell you now number of days that z has worked is very simple out of 23 days that he has actually worked he has uh, this includes two days of work two days of work of 15th august and uh, this is 15th august plus sunday so two days are gone then there is two days that he has worked uh, over time that is eight days and seven days so can i say 19 days 19 days work has happened normally 15th august and sunday are abnormal things and overtime that he has worked for 10 hours and 9 hours is also a abnormal thing which means 19 days he has worked for 7.5 hours because half an hour is lunch break on the 15th august and sunday on 15th august and sunday he has worked for uh, one is five hours and the other is six hours all right and then and then on uh, 5th august and 13th august he has actually worked for 9 hours and 10 hours or 10 hours and 9 hours half an hour break that is as good as saying 9.5 hours and 8.5 hours so once i add these three things that is one 
2 and 3 I will actually get the actual number of hours that Z has put in work in the month of August 19 days because 2 days exclude for uh, abnormal thing of overtime and 2 days exclude for abnormal thing of working extra on holiday and Sunday now we have not subtracted half an hour from 5 hours and 6 hours because this is without lunch break I think is what the question had mentioned where is that data given to us huh. 5 hours and 6 hours respectively without lunch break this line is directly mentioned without lunch break so we have not subtracted 30 minutes from 5 hours and 6 hours now what the ICI has done ICI has unfortunately taken 21 days into 7.5 hours 9.5 and 8.5 is correct 5 hours and 6 hours is correct so this 21 is wrong it should be 19 and then it is correct because if I am doing 21 days into 7.5 I am also adding 9.5 and 8 and this 9.5 and 8.5 are already including 7.5 so it's a double calculation so this will change the final answer of these many hours and obviously rate per hour will change so 186.5 minus 15 that is 7.5 taken twice extra that will be subtracted and this number of days is going to be 171.5 and 46254 divided by 171.5 is going to give me a rate of 269.7 269.7 this is the final rate per hour that Mr. Z has earned in the month of August considering his casual leaves, considering his extra days of work and considering his extra hours of work for overtime. So ICA has done incorrect according to us this definitely is a double counting for two days. So we should exclude that in our calculation we should take 19 hours into 7.5 and all other things will remain the same. So this is wrong and this is correct so rate per hour will change the last thing that the question has asked is the wage to be charged to the job number so and so whatever number of hours have been given by mr z on this job those number of hours into the rate per hour obviously ici will use this rate but our rate is 269.7 into 100 and this is going to be the final answer of wages to be charged to job number HT 200 very interesting and important question normally in the past uh, exams or in the previous RTPs or in reference books there have been questions of Halse, Rowan, uh, your bonus scheme, time based system, piece based system etc etc but this is something which is different so this is something that you guys need to revise before the exam on the last day so please mark this sum as important done this is how we solve question number two and now we will uh, go to question number eight which has also not been discussed so question number eight is based on job costing and material uh, issue price so again a very very important sum this is uh, a little challenging question and i would say it's a difficult question if you have not dealt with a question like this uh, and you attempt it in the exam very few people are going to get it fully correct and also it's going to up, uh, take a lot of time because it's a little calculation intensive sum very interesting sum very good conceptual sum as well so please mark this sum as important all right so let us start uh, we are doing job costing and it's question number eight from the november 20 rtp let's start please a company a company received a job offer for supply and fitting of plumbing material so that's a jobbing company so plumbing materials ka order we have got direct materials uh, ap uses important line uses a weighted average method for pricing of material issues can you remember something from this i hope yes you had a chapter in cpt for uh, materials where we used to find uh, where you find uh, the closing stock and we used to prepare a storekeeper's ledger remember there used to be three columns one column for uh, receipts one columns for issues and one columns and, and one column for a balance and every column had three internal columns of quantity rate and amount this column of rate in the issues main column 
is going to use a weighted average method to price its issues is what this line is saying all right this is what is the meaning of the line implication obviously i will tell you as the sum progresses data opening stock of materials as on 12th august so we have been given some data for 12th august we have 15 mm pipe 12 units of 15 feet size frankly whatever is the size the rate is given as 600 each it is not given 600 per feet all right so 15 feet or 20 feet or 18 feet it does not make any difference 20 mm pipe 10 units of 15 feet size at 660 other fitting materials stainless steel and wall so can i say there are five types of material there are five types of materials 15 mm pipe 20 mm pipe other materials a stainless steel faucet and a valve fine then they have given the data of purchases okay and it is given date wise so on 16th august we are purchasing 20 mm pipe units are given and cost is given uh, we also purchase 10 units of valve fine then we come to 18th august then we buy other fitting materials and stainless steel then we come to 27th august and then we buy 15 mm pipe we buy 20 mm pipe and we buy valve for different different units and different different prices then we come to issues then we come to issues for the job note that purchases is more like receipts in that uh, format of cpd or ca foundation receipts column so all these purchases are or, or will enter in the receipts column if i make the storekeeper's ledger and these will enter in the issues column of the storekeeper's ledger we have a 20 mm pipe two units we have other um, uh, materials 18 units then uh, 17th august we have 50 mm pipe uh, eight units other fitting materials then we have 28th august so we have issues on let us mark the dates uh, we have issues on uh, 12th august 17th august 28th august and 30th august and date wise issues of respective materials have been given okay now direct labor there is a plumber and there is a helper hours have been given and they have been mentioned that these are some content overtime as well and overtime is paid at 1.5 times of the normal wage rate fine this is for job costing depending on how many hours he has put in and how many uh, overtime hours he has put in we will compute his total uh, wage and that's my cost for the particular job overheads are applied at 26 per direct labor hour whatever hours the plumber has put in whatever hours the helper has put in all those hours will be added and into 26 per hour will be my absorption of overheads pricing policy company policy is to price all orders uh, at a margin of 25 percent of sales price which means cost plus profit is sales if margin is given as a percentage of sales let the sales be 100 margin will be 25 balancing figure will be cost that is one third on cost the profit and one fourth on sales compute what is the required part compute the cost of the job and the price to be charged frankly if i get a cost i simply have to add the margin and i will get the selling price of the job so it's a question of job costing but predominantly it is a question on material costing because the material cost is to be included in the job and that is how the costing of job is to be done now the other job costing sums that the ICI has in its module or which we have solved in our classrooms are very simple data is given for material data is given for labor data is given for absorption we simply add everything and we get the cost and we add the margin to get my selling price but this question is extremely unique because of the materials content aspect now how do we find the material cost first of all tell me when we have uh, prepared any cost sheet for a job or for a product the material cost is obviously a cost element what have we taken as a material cost have we taken have we taken the purchase as a cost or have we taken consumed as a cost tell me important purchases is never a cost purchase is simply uh, helping us to find what is the amount payable or what amount we have paid actual cost is the consumption of materials conceptual fine now somebody would say if consumption is a cost all we have to do is opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock and this will give me this will give me what is the amount of the materials which we have consumed note that we have the data of opening stock 
we have the data of purchases but we do not have the data we do not have the data of closing stock because of which we cannot find the consumed or the consumption figure with the formula of opening plus purchase minus cs which means we will ultimately have to find the consumption differently now how do we find the consumption go to the root of the problem what do you mean by consumption when the production department will consume the materials now tell me when the production department wants to consume materials what will it do the production department will not stock the materials it is the storekeeper who is going to stock the materials so once the production uh, uh, department needs some raw materials for the purpose of consumption it will tell the storekeeper to issue some materials which means once we prepare that format if you remember we have three columns one column was for remember for uh, receipts one column was for issues and one column was for balance and every column had quantity rate amount quantity rate amount and quantity rate amount what did i say i mentioned that when the production department is in need of raw materials it will ask the storekeeper to issue goods which means the numbers which are coming in the issue column where will the storekeeper issue or to whom will the storekeeper issue raw materials storekeeper is going to issue raw materials only for the or only towards the production department and this is nothing but consumption the figure that we indirectly used or directly use for the purpose of getting closing stock see in the, in foundation our objective was to get the closing stock barabar we never found out the amount of goods consumed because it was never asked but consumption figure was directly available with us all that time it is just that we have not used it now that the data is given in this way purchases issues purchases issues and the question has said that we are going to use the weighted average method then we are going to use the weighted average method to find the rate column which will ultimately help us to find the amount column and it is the amount column which is ultimately going to give us the consumption and this amount of consumption is going to enter in our job cost sheet this is going to be done for five times because we have five different type of materials that is 50 mm pipe 20 mm pipe uh, other materials that uh, some faucet or something and then that valve so we have to find the issue car rate using the vam method and once we do this for five materials the total of all the issues is going to be the amount of goods consumed this is how we find the consumption and ultimately consumption is the cost got it that is why i said that this question is very unique we have never done uh this working to find the consumption we always do opening plus purchase minus closing stock at the most what we have done in some questions is we have prepared a creditors ledger opening balance is known closing balance is known uh payments are known and balancing figure is the purchases and opening plus purchases minus closing stock is the consumption at the most we have done this to find the consumption figure but now we will do a completely different uh, strategy or completely different way to get the consumption figure that makes the sum extremely interesting and lengthy as well fine so let's go step by step we are first going to compute the cost of issues of the first material and the first material okay and once the material is done then it's simple uh, dm and other overheads and simply add everything to get the cost so it is the sum is based obviously on job costing but it is the material issues that is uh, you know taking the entire uh, crux of the entire question all right so let's go step by step let us first deal with the first type of material and the first type of material is 15 mm pipe all right now how do we get the price <coughs> of the materials issues 50 mm pipe where is it first let me underline everywhere that material pipe is there so first is opening stock on 12th of august then uh, 15 mm pipe uh, has been uh, issued on 17th of august year then 15 mm pipe has been purchased on 15th of august year 15 mm pipe is again issued on 15th on 20th of august year and that's it 
so we have 12th august opening then we have uh, 12th august issued then we have 18th 27th august purchased and we also have 28th august issued all right so how do we get the issue we'll prepare a working note first we have q so our format is ready now we will have to uh, do um, the input as per the given data to find the cost of the uh, consumption now we are currently doing data for 15 mm pipes only so let us restrict ourselves to data of 15 mm pipes only all right so uh, first transaction is of the opening balance opening balance is opening balance is for um, 12 units at 15 nee, 12 units at rupees 600 each so opening balance is 12 units at rupees 600 appears to be 7200 okay one minute 7200 okay then then the then the next transaction is on 12th august ke baad we have 27th august uh, no we have 12th august oh 12th august there is 20 mm pipe sorry so this is not a transaction as of now Theke. then we have 17th august ko issue and 27th ko purchase so as per the order of the dates first issue is of 8 units so let us go to issue column and 8 quantity at rupees 600 because that is the only price at which my existing stocks are there so this is my first issue then the transaction is on the 27th of august for purchases which is for 35 units at 628 so 35 units oh the balance is going to be uh, 12 minus 8 is 4 and 7200 minus 4800 is again going to be 2400 and this will remain at 600 then we purchase 35 at 628 total is going to be 4 plus 35 that is 39 and 628 into 35 is 21980 plus 2400 of the existing stock this will give me 24380 and this is the wind average price and on 28th and on 28th of august we have issued 10 units and this will be in the issue column 10 units and the price that they're going to use is 24380 because we are doing a weighted average method divided by 39 that is 625 point whatever and this uh, this will be 24380 upon 39 so 24 380 divided by 39 the whole into 10 appears to be 6251 6251 so 4800 plus 6251 11051 11051 is the consumption of 15 mm pipe so we have used weighted average method to find the rate and ultimately the rate has been used to find the issues and issues is our consumption let us see what the ICI has done for 15 mm pipe what the ICI has done the answer is 11051 which we have also found out 11051 is here and 11051 is here as well how the ICI has done it they have found out the uh, price as 8 into 600 which we have also found out and 4 into 600 that is the balance remaining plus 35 into 620 at the purchases upon 39 that is nothing but 4 plus 35 and that is the way they have found out the issue price of the goods issued of 15 mm pipe all right same thing same thing we are going to do for 20 mm pipe so we'll prepare one more small table like this if you are comfortable using the method that ICI has used, obviously you can use it that way. If you are comfortable using the proper uh, method in which you guys have done the IC, your uh, foundation, then we go as per the foundation method. Since we are discussing this in detail, I am doing the working note in detail. Now we are doing for 20 mm pipe. 
now let us mark 20 mm pipe wherever it has come let us use a different colored pen for understanding 20 mm pipe where is 20 mm pipe first is there in the opening stock then it is purchased on the 16th of august then uh, we have uh, issued on the 12th of august then we have issued on the 28th of august and well that's it fine so we'll use this data in our storekeepers ledger which will help us to find the average price for issues which is going to help us to find the consumption price so opening stock is 10 units at 660 so 20 mm pipe ka opening stock is 10 units at 660 so 6600 then as per the order uh, 20 mm pipe 12th august then we have 16th august purchase and we have 12th august issues this one so this will issue two units and since i have only one type of stock the rate will be same two units issued at 660 appears to be 1320 i think 1320 and this will be eight units left and 6600 minus 1320 is 5280 and this obviously will be at 660 balancing figure then the next transaction date after 12th august appears to be 16th august for purchase and we have purchased 20 nay, 30 units at 610 so we have purchased 30 units at 610 8 plus 30 is a 38 and 5280 the balance okay first 610 into 30 this 18300 plus 5280 balance appears to be 23580 and balancing figure is the weighted average price and this is the transaction of 30 which is on 17th sorry 16th of august so 16 august transaction is done 12th august transaction is done and now we only do the issue of two pipes or two units on 20th august of two units so we go to the issue column we issue two units and the price is going to be 25 sorry 23 23 580 divided by 38 so 25 25 uh, what am i doing 23 580 divided by 38 and the whole into 2 1 2 4 1 this is the issue of a 20 mm pipe anything more which i have missed 20 mm pipe opening is 20 mm then 20 mm purchases has been taken care of oh we have missed 27th august oh, oh, oh we have missed 27th august 27th august is before the last issue so this will be impacted let me first i forgot one adjustment good i saw here we missed out on this so 27th august will first uh, purchase 20 units at 660 purchase will come here 20 units at 660 so uh, 38 plus 20 is 58 and 660 into 20 is 13200 which will be added to 23580 so 36780 and the issues of two will be priced at 36,780 upon 58. So 36,780 divided by 58 and the whole into 2 is 1,268. And this 1,268. So there are only 4 issues. Let us confirm once again. Issues of 20 is 2 units a year and 20 mm pipe issue is two units here and well that's it so uh, this is how we have done total appears to be a 1320 plus 1268 2588 2588 should be in the cost sheet of the icai that is 2588 this is how we get the material 
consumption cost of 20 mm pipe what the ICI has done as working which will be very similar to what we have done this is two units at 660 which we have done and 8 into 660 opening balance plus 30 purchase plus 20 purchase the whole upon the whole upon 8 plus 30 plus 20 is nothing but 1268 and this is what we have also got as 2588 then as I said this is lengthy then the next transaction or the next type of goods is other fitting materials again we have to go to other fitting materials let's again use a different colored pen to segregate other fitting materials first is the opening stock of other uh, fitting materials here then other fitting materials have been purchased on the 18th of august here then other fitting materials have been issued on 12th of august here then other fitting materials are issued on 17th of august year then it's issued on 28th of august year and issued on 30 august as well so we have many transaction for the fitting materials let us go step by step other fitting materials again the three columns of quantity rate amount so we have quantity rate amount quantity rate amount and quantity rate amount opening balance of other fitting materials appears to be 60 at 26 so we have 60 at 26 so 60 into 26 is 1560 on the 12th of august then the next transaction is on 18th august uh, 12th august again issues year of 18 units so 18 units will be issued on 12th august itself for other fitting materials then we'll purchase them so 18 18 will then be issued will be issued at 26 so 18 into 26 18 into 26 appears to be 468 60 minus 18 is 42 and 1560 minus 468 appears to be 1092 this will be 26 because that's the only thing available then the next transaction date 12th after 12th august is uh, 17th august and uh, 16th august we haven't purchased other fitting materials so 17th august we have issued 30 units issued 30 units so we will again issue in the issue column 30 units again the same rate will be used 26 into 30 is 780 out of 42 30 is gone so 12 are remaining 1092 i will subtract 780 i will get 312 and the rate will still be 26 fine then the next transaction date after 17th august is uh, 18th august this has been purchased we have purchased uh, 150 units at 28 so we have purchased we have purchased 150 units at 28 so 150 into 28 appears to be 4200 so this is going to be a 12 uh, opening the 12 is quantity plus 150 is 162 and uh, <clears throat> 312 plus 4200 is 4512 and this whatever rate comes that's my weighted average price that's my transaction for 150 goods purchased 150 goods purchased on the 18th of august all right so we are done with we are done with the opening balance 12th august then we are done with the issue then we are done with one more issue and we are done with the purchase so other fitting materials will now be issued and the issue will be of 34 units issue so again go to issue column 34 have been issued the price is going to be 4512 divided by 162 so 4512 divided by 162 the whole into 34 appears to be 946.9 .9, so it is 947 so 162 may say i'll subtract 34 i will get 128 
and 4512 may say I'll subtract 947 I will get 3565 and balancing figure is the weighted average price and we have one more issue of other fitting materials 60 units so 60 will be in the issue column will again issue 60 and the price will again be 3565 divided by 128 whatever it comes into into 60 issued is 1671 is 1671 so this plus this plus this plus this total if you add up everything you will get the materials issued price as far as other fitting materials is concerned so it's 468 plus 780 plus 947 plus 1671 appears to be 3866 this should be in the solution that is 3866 and that is how you get three materials consumption cost for this job what has ICI have done they have done it separately one price for 18 units one price for 30 and then 12 into 26 plus 150 upon 28 the whole upon 162 that is 12 plus 150 and 12 into 26 opening plus 150 purchases the whole again upon 162 for pricing these two things and the total is nothing but the price of the materials consumed for other fitting materials now last two are remaining but last two are simple uh, the last is your stainless steel and valve now stainless steel and valve there are few transactions one is the opening stock uh, then for stainless steel directly stainless steel is purchased here different colored pen let me use so stainless steel is uh, we are doing for stainless steel first so stainless steel is opening then stainless steel has been purchased here then stainless steel is nowhere to be seen and stainless steel is directly stainless steel is directly issued as the last so it is one purchase and then we have issued so opening plus purchase whatever rate comes we will use the same for 15 units that is 15 units have been issued so what the ICI has done opening of stainless steel is 6 at 204 and then we have purchased 15 at 209 so stainless steel 6 at 204 opening plus 15 at 209 the only purchase and then I will divide by 21 that is 6 plus 15 and this weighted average price is going to be used on the amount of goods issued that is 15 this 15 is coming from issues here alright so this will give me the weighted average price of the stainless steel issued and that is 3113 as per maths similarly as far as valve is concerned valve opening valve opening is at 404 year then we purchase valve on the 16th of august year then we issue valve year and then valve is issued year and there is no other purchase so the same price is going to be used for both the issues so what we do is this is my uh, 6 valve have been issued here and valve issue is oh valve there is only one uh, issue then two purchases and one issue so opening plus op okay opening was 6 at 204 then we purchased 10 at 402 then we purchased 14 at 424 so opening plus two purchases so this is the opening content this is the first purchase this is the second purchase and uh, and 8 plus 10 plus 14 is 32 and this will be used on the total number of issues of 6 and this 6 is coming from here where is valve issue valve issue is here no where is that valve ah, here all right so since we have only one issue and we have two purchases or three purchases add up all the purchase quantity add up all the rupees content and i will divide by number of uh, goods purchased to get the weighted average price and that will be used on the valve issued to get the consumption cost and that is the last materials cost once i add up once i add up first material second material third material fourth and fifth i will get the total cost of the materials issued on this job 
then then we have got three things remaining plumbers uh, labor helpers labor and the overheads absorption 180 uh, hours at rupees 100 per hour and it includes 12 hours of overtime so what we'll do is uh, 180 hours into 100 is the basic and the 12 overtime content this on uh, since 12 is a part of 180 the 100 content is already a part of the previous cost it is only the overtime premium content that has to be added and the overtime is 1.5 times so 100 into 1.5 is 150 it is only the 50 that is left to be calculated and this is going to be the cost for plumber all right so plumber is 180 uh, into 100 as we have done and 12 into 50 and that works out to be 18600 similarly for a helper it is going to be 192 hours into rupees 70 includes 12 uh, 24 hours overtime so 24 hours now 70 into 1.5 is 105 70 content is already taken care of in the previous calculation so it is only the premium content that will be the cost for helper so 192 into 70 plus 24 into 35 so 192 into 70 plus 24 into 35 this will give me total cost of 14280 then comes the last of overheads that is 26 per labor hour 26 per labor hour so 180 plus 192 these many labor hours have been input that into 26 so 26 into 190 and 20 so 180 is coming from here 192 is coming from here add everything and use it with the absorption rate and i will get the absorption content of 9672 once i add the labor and helper i will get this figure of 32880 add up everything and i will get add up everything and i will get the total cost towards this job finally and then i will add up the margin 25 percent profit uh, uh, profit on the issue price or the uh, sale price means one third means one third on oh, no, one fourth what's the margin 25 percent of sales price so sales is 100 25 is the margin one third of cost or one fourth of selling price so uh, whatever is the cost i will take one third of that and which appears to be this and finally i will get the selling price or the quotation price of this job and this question has come to an end finally so as i mentioned question number two and question number eight are very important for this reason it is a very unique question you will not find questions like these much in any reference books or the ici materials that is why this questions is or, or these questions are very important so in the previous session we have discussed one to nine except question number two and question number eight which has just been discussed now in the next session we'll continue from question number 10 and we'll take it to question number 14 and that is how we'll cover the entire rtp of november 20 these two questions that is 2 and 8 are of utmost importance all right see you guys in the next session where we'll be continuing from question number 10 all right see you guys bye bye